back again for another random review and this time you guys did not leave me much option it was pretty much unanimous so let's go straight into it with Universe Nemesis Prime the repaint of Big Convoy from Beast Wars Neo in Japan I admit I don't own the original just this version and you know what I'm kinda happy about it because this thing does a whole lot that I like now let's get the basic form out of the way uh, this kind of works better for Nemesis Prime since it's rather a big beast that could really do some major damage. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense for a Maximal since, you know, it'd be pretty hard to disguise himself as a mammoth these days. But it's a really nice looking mold, if a little bit distracting because of how panely he is. I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but, you know... Otherwise, it's done a great job. Big black woolly mammoth, Power Ranger-esque, I dare say. A lot of these uh, silver spray apps, where normally the original had two-toned fur. This one almost looks like uh, he's got a lot of snow stuck to his fur. And it keeps with the Nemesis color scheme and really brings out the toy a lot. Really keeps it from looking boring in this mode. He's got a ton of fur detail. I mean, you can see that. It's very intricate going all over him. It's really an impressive job here. And it actually holds together fairly well. Everything locks up despite how this thing transforms. A uh, few slight problems. Uh, yeah, Beast Machines had... Or Beast Wars toys had a lot of these where... Well, you've really got to ignore a few angles. Like, even front on... Yeah, you can tell. This, this is not a real mammoth. He's got a bunch of little functions here. And the first one I'll get out of the way is the obvious. Since this is an elephant. Pulling back on the little switch on top of his head. Raises up the snout. Which is actually quite a cool little effect. It gives him a lot more life than I would have expected. And you know, two points of articulation. And only two points. This guy is a brick in this mode. But, you know, he can move his ears, he can move his trunk, so, oh well, you've got a lot of uh, little tricks you can pull. Speaking of, pushing back on the ears, uh, I'm pretty sure a real mammoth cannot do this, but we'll, we'll just assume this is creative license. So, he can actively gore anybody, which really brings me to one of the most notable details on this toy, the bloody tusks. What was Hasbro thinking? This is this is absolutely vile. <laughs> this thing just gored a fresh animal and didn't even bother wiping it off. It, it's gruesome is what it is. I mean, I'm shocked. I mean, this is something that I would expect, like, Takara to create. You know, considering uh, Beast Wars Neo, they are really, really proud of their dead mode uh, dinosaurs. But this, this is, this is violent. Yeah, that's shocking. You also got a little red in the eyes, so... I, g I guess you can't really have the classic Nemesis Prime slash Scourge red uh, windshields in a mammoth mode. So we're, we're just going to paint the eyes red. And it really gives off... It, it's the definitive thing to do for an evil figure. So, all in all, this is really well done. Though, uh, transforming this thing for review was not fun in the least. Uh, this thing is extremely panely, and uh, the panels can all line up. You could have this panel, the leg, this one, this one. All of this could line up and connect correctly. But for some reason, this thing is about an inch higher than it should be. It's just There's just so many ways you can incorrectly connect all these panels that... You really, really uh, need to take your time and really know this toy inside and out before you can really get this thing back and forth easily. And even then, I'm not happy with all these little panel lines it creates. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, I forgot. This thing has a weapon mode. I, I better cover that one, too, before we get to the robot. So, really quick. Now here we have something of an artillery mode, and honestly, I can't even remember if I've got this thing transformed correctly, but the missile's out, it looks correct from what I remember. I'm going to run with it because I really don't like these modes. I really only show it off here because it's probably where his weapon is most effective, and we'll get to that in robot mode. But for the most part, yeah, 
big cannon sticking out of skull. Uh, let's move on to something more interesting. Finally onto robot mode, and this is where the toy is really at its best. I mean, by far. You've got the classic Nemesis Prime color scheme, uh, jazzed up a little bit in Hasbro's typical way in the early to mid 2000s by replacing flat gray with this kind of bone colored tan. Uh, on normal Nemesis Primes, anything that turns into a truck for instance, I cannot stand this, but I, I have an easier time accepting it on a Beast Wars version. It just feels a little bit more natural to have an organic color like that mixed in here. Aside from that, he does have all the traditionals. Red uh, making up what would normally be his prime uh, windshield chest. Uh, you've got a lot of red detailing here. A lot of little metallic blue mixed in as well. So all the classic colors are there. It does a quite nice job of creating a beast era nemesis. And this guy... Let me tell you, this guy is all about his little tricks. Okay, you see see all this artillery up here? All these little missile pods and batteries? Okay, that's some pretty heavy duty. Uh, what, what, that's not enough for you? Oh, okay, let's open up these panels here on the side where you have firing missiles. What, what, that's still not enough firepower for you? Okay, how about this, if I can unfold these without snapping them off in one take. This is just one of these tiny little details that Beast Wars Neo loved to add in for no reason other than we could. It was there. You can see little tiny uh, Gatling batteries that have been molded into the bottom of the uh, into the mammoth mode feet. Just um, extra little detailing they really didn't need to put on but you know what? Extra artillery is never a bad thing. Yeah, that's a far easier way of transforming that. That's one thing that quickly starts bugging me about this toy, is that uh, in typical Beast Wars Neo fashion, almost all of his robot mode is comprised of bits hidden inside of his Beast Mode shells. Now, you know Beast Wars, and you're all going to say shell former right off the bat, uh, yada yada. Uh... U.S. Beast Wars has nothing on Japanese Beast Wars. Uh, it basically equates to a pretender that wears his shell, just hanging off of his body at all times. I mean, look, bits of panel here. Here's the legs from the mammoth. Here's the side. Here's the top shoulder. There's the head. None of the robot is truly comprised of the mammoth's parts. In fact, and people have done this, you can remove all of these pieces that comprise the mammoth and build the mammoth without the robot. I mean, in my opinion, it's a lazy design move. I mean, it allows for a few more dynamic robots, but they always end up with shell kibble all over the place and some really awkward design moves in order to do it this way. I much prefer the U.S. method of trying to incorporate the beast mode into the robot mode in order to develop something a little bit more unique and somewhat uh, old school, which is uh, a blasphemous thing to say for some in comparison to Beast Wars. Okay, how about we move back to firepower? Where's the rest of the mammoth mode, you might ask? Like his trunk and his head. It all went into the ginormous cannon. Uh, there's all kinds of ways you can assemble this because of all the kibble bits that are hanging off of it. Uh, I like to leave as much of the cannon exposed as possible. This little button up here rotates and fires off not one but two missiles in succession. So it's kind of a neat little missile firing thing. I usually don't have it in hand because it's so freaking big. It weighs his arm down very easily and the joints really did not come off very well. I think we might have gotten a little bit of degradation since it's Japanese release. But if you don't want him to hold the weapon in any way, you can have it stored back here. The trunk hangs up off the top and looks a little silly, but otherwise it stores fairly nicely. You got a lot of little bits of articulation here. He's got a lot of motion in the neck, fully articulated ball joints for his shoulders and elbows. He actually has uh, an elbow swivel and a ball joint, so he's got a lot of range of motion there. You can also move his wrists up and down, full articulation in the hips, 
in the knees, which are actually double jointed, but that bottom joint is restricted because of, guess what, beast mode kibble. And in a design move ahead of its time, uh, the feet angle. Both the back and the front are on a ball joint, so you can angle the feet and position it however you want. Really helps us balance and gets them into some really cool poses. Let's see, how about a few more little tricks? Well, for some reason he's got one uh, Terminator arm, which I always found amusing. That's a cool little design trait. I like any uh, asymmetry, which is always interesting. Folding these panels down will present to you uh, attack clubs. Now, flick out and they hold into the bottom of the hand. Uh, the only problem I have with this is that the panels hiding these uh, aren't very secure. Mine pop off quite frequently. Again, I attribute it to the reuse of the mold and the degradation that might have come with it. It could just be mine. Uh, as always, mileage may vary on these sorts of things. So, if yours doesn't have this problem, well, lucky you. I wish I had yours. Uh, let's move into the chest now, and we will give you something very unique. And it's not the fact that this is a Decepticon who is masquerading as a Predacon with a Maximal symbol in his chest. No. To open up the chest to reveal the Matrix. Uh, this is the dead Matrix, specifically. Uh, and we got just enough universe story to learn the name. Translucent red plastic for the sphere inside. And, you know, it's... You can tell it's got a unique style, but it's also very much akin to the original Matrix. For Big Convoy, uh, this was a neat little gimmick because it was the first Transformer ever to have a removable Matrix, and yes, he can hold on to it. For Nemesis Prime, he's the first Decepticon to have any type of Matrix, especially a removable one. He's got so many tricks and a lot of articulation, if hindered by a few faults, like how much his how much kibble is hanging off of him, the loose joints, and something that really bugs me. Uh, he's got a really dark red for his eyes, and I can't tell if it's supposed to be light piping or not, but it's really hard to pick up any kind of color in them, which kind of makes him look dead, and I've never really liked that about a toy. It's a big faux pas of mine, or pet peeve, faux pas, some word I don't normally use. Anyway, I don't like it. So... Nemesis Prime, in a nutshell, he's a really nice toy. He really makes the Nemesis Prime take a completely new look and direction. And he really is a very nice redeco of the Big Convoy. Uh, that said, he's got faults in both modes, so buyer beware. So, he's alright. Not my favorite, but I still like him quite a bit. With that, we move on to the Magic Bag of Destiny, and we pick yet another review. As always, leave comments on which one you want. This time, Popular Vote decided it. Now, I'm usually looking for something that catches my attention. Anyone who wants to be a little bit goofy or, in, or uh, really emphatic about wanting a toy, you're, it's your job to convince me. So, whether it's by, mass, whether it's by uh, quality or quantity, that's up to you guys. Now, you pull the chip. <laughs> I keep waiting for a colored one. Yes, there are a couple colored ones in there. Oh my god. I'm going to be very, very specific with you people here. This is the Armada chip. Do not pick a plastic addict victim. Don't pick anything I've reviewed before. Pick something that, oh, I don't know, was actually good from Armada. I know that gives you like three choices, but please try your best. Armada series. Let's hope for the best. The best place for toys on the net? BigBadToyStore.com Pre-orders for all the hottest toys. The biggest brands. Imports of your favorites. Vintage toys available again. Collectible replicas and statues. Pile of loot. Buy some now, some later, and get it shipped all at once. It's all there right now at BigBadToyStore.com